When we start to work with the LARA at the new brake system uh, and with uh, IndyCar, um, the challenge, the main challenge was to have the common brake system for oval and road course. In the past on road course, uh, IndyCar was using cast iron and it's the first time they move to carbon material. Having a carbon material that was working on a such wide range of condition on the ovals and on the road course was the main challenge of the development. Um, fortunately, with our long experience on racing over 40 years and our great experience on fields where the carbon is used, like Formula One or 24 Hour of Le Mans, we develop material that can be used in a wide range of temperature and in wide range of energy condition. And this gives us the possibility to approach the project in the correct way. Um, even if people think that carbon can be used only on a, at a specific temperature, uh, this was true probably five, six years ago. Now it's different. The technology evolved, move forward, and we can guarantee the best performance starting from 300 degrees up to 600 in many different conditions, um, even in wet tracks or in the ovals, where the energy obviously is a lot less. The brakes are made by a six-piston caliper. Um, it's a basic configuration. It's very similar with what we have on uh, other open wheels formula, like Formula One, and uh, uses uh, 328 millimeters diameter rotors with carbon-carbon uh, pads. The material is called CR200, and this very close to the material we use in a 24 hour of Le Mans, so our endurance compound. One of the main targets for us to develop the new system was to keep the wear rate as low as possible, guaranteeing anyway good performance in through the life of the material. And this is what we do. With a 30 millimeter disc, we can guarantee for a team a very long distance on the track and a long life for the material. Um, through the road course and obviously in the oval when the wear is not necessarily the primary problem but you have to avoid the glazing that is the most the highest enemy of the oval races um, the system is the same front and rear and as we discuss is the same for road course and the oval the system the, the team do not have to change setup for uh, for the brakes changing uh, to road course to the oval, they have just to adapt the brake temperature and the taping or opening the duct accordingly to the temperature they see at the track. This is a monoblock caliper made of aluminium machined from a billet. It's a six piston, you can see three on one side and three on the other side. It's a monoblock, so it doesn't mean you do not have screws that are connecting the two halves of the caliper. You have titanium inserts that are really important to isolate the caliper from the heat coming from the pads. And uh, this technology allowed you to have a very light body, but still to keep a high stiffness of the system, high hydraulic stiffness, that allowed the driver to put all the energy in generating friction and not lose uh, power to deform the calipers. Um, the same calipers, as we discussed, use front and rear. And uh, the caliper, is the first element that interacts to generate the pressure and the torque you need to stop the car. Consider that on a, on a, you can have over 1,000 psi of pressure inside of the brake caliper during the use. It's, it's difficult to show the weight on the TV, but they are really light. Uh, and small, and this two piece against the disc is what is generating the friction. This is the, um, our carbon material. It's the same compound we use in Formula One for the pads. And, um, and uh, you have 0.5 pounds of weight per, per pad. So these, uh, these are the second stage of generating brake torque with the caliper and then with the brake disc. And this is our brake disc. Uh, through the brake head, you, are, you have the disc that is attached to the hub, and um, so the disc is rotating, you have the caliper that clamp the pads against the disc, generating the friction. 
This cooling design is done in order to maximize the, maximize the cooling performance of the disc. Um, the, the material, as we discussed, is the same we use on the 24 hour of Le Mans. So in Le Mans, you can, just for your understanding, we have a 32 millimeter disc and it lasts 24 hours. 24 hours means over 5,000 kilometers. Um, teams do not have to change brakes during the Le Mans 24 hours. And this was a big step forward comparing, comparing to the past. Same th technology has been brought to the IndyCar brakes and um, offering this lightweight and high performance carbon material. Just to give you a number, to make this disc, you need six month production time. You start from um, what is called the preform and then you densify through a CVD process, chemical vapor deposition. And that's why it's called carbon-carbon. You have a carbon matrix uh, where you have the deposition of the carbon through a CVD process. Then you have the machining, and this is the final result of, of the operation. I remember the first time we test our brakes with, uh, with uh, Dan Weldon at Indianapolis. I remember the first comment, the best brakes I ever had on racing car. I think this is, this is honestly the feeling the driver had using our brakes. Then you are constantly looking for the best performances and you know, is a continuous work between car setup and brake setup in order to get the best performances for the package. Uh, we work close to the team, we work close to IndyCar and we work, clo we work close to Dallara in order to make everyone happy. Every driver has his own driver style. Every team has his own way of working. The goal is to collect all the information and to support the teams to find the best package for the team and for the driver.